Well, hello there, my fellow priests and kings. This is Josh Packard. Welcome to another episode of The Golden Image of Churchianity is a Lie. I'm really about thinking about changing the name to The Golden Image of Christianity is a Lie, to be more specific. Um, we've, we, we've known for a long time that Satan sits enthroned in all of Christianity. Um, and every other religion as well. And it's not for the reasons you might think, because they're not bad people. Most Christians are good people. Most Mormons, most Muslims, most everyone, they're all good people. I don't have anything against anyone except for assholes. I don't like assholes. Nobody likes assholes. Okay. But um, <clears throat> that doesn't translate to life, right? Being good and doing, doing evil, they have no bearing uh, for anything. See, life is established on God's word. Um, and this is going to be really interesting because God's word is absolutely being blasphemed by every religion and all of Christianity, your pastor, your church, you, everyone is blaspheming Jesus. And the reason being is, is they're not acknowledging his word, what God spoke from the very beginning. God has not altered what he's spoken. Anywhere at any time, he has not altered it. It has always been a yes, not a no, not a maybe, not a perhaps. It's always been done and done. Nobody in this world has ever believed him. We do have the record of Enoch. He did believe him. He received that he was pleasing to God. We, have, we don't know exactly what um, Elijah um, saw, but we can, we can pretty much guess. And then we know that Jesus overcame death by the same word. It's always that word. Christ is the word that overcomes death. He is the life. He's the way, the truth, the life. He's the, very, he's the light. He's, he's everything that God has spoken in the affirmative. And it's a reminder, Christ was not just... The, the, he didn't just show up 2,000 years ago, and that's when he just miraculously began working. <coughs> He'd already completed his work from the foundation of the world. We, we see the reiteration of that word in Christ on the cross 2,000 years ago. So it's the same word, just reminding us that God's word stands, that nothing else can alter that word because Christ killed, well, killed himself, but I guess we should say that he gave up his own life on our behalf in order to see that even our sins couldn't, couldn't change what he has had planned from the very beginning. See, the idea is this simple. This is why every single church and denomination, religion, everything in the world, every philosophy, everything, everything in the world denies that Christ has absolutely reconciled everything. Not just 2,000 years ago, but from forever ago. To, so from forever past to forever future, that word will never change. Okay. So then every Christian denomination comes up and says, well, you got to believe. Well, that is contrary to God's word. That's backwards. That's saying that now you have to do something that can influence God's word or change it or the course of what he's set forth to establish. So then your belief or non-belief is bearing upon that, right? Your acceptance, your choices, your free will, your all these things. So then you're being distracted away from the authority of God's word for your own for your own abilities, <laughs> according to the opinions of other men, to whether they believe that you believe enough or accept enough, or whether you worship God correctly according to our denomination and according to what we profess and confess, because you're not really a Christian if you don't get baptized correctly or speak in tongues or blah, 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 down the list, because everybody has these ideas. Seventh-day Adventists, you got to worship on Sunday, or I mean Saturday. So anyone that worships on Sunday is wrong. And so we have all these people dividing and all these different things because there has not been an agreement on God's word at all by anyone ever. If it were not so, we would have already overcome death by now. But as it is, the church teaches us to focus on the power of death and hell and Satan. Because the, death, the power of death is just good and evil. Being good or evil according to your conception. Which is... The way it causes death and works death is it gets you to look away from your source of life, being God, and the word that he spoke forever, which is Christ Jesus, right? You turn away from him in order to satisfy your own opinion. Everyone has done it. Every single person from the beginning of, from the fall, this has happened. This is how Adam and Eve, they were separated from God. 
is they turned and looked from his word when God and then then covered themselves and then God revealed this when he said who told you you're naked God didn't tell them they were naked they just assumed it and that's what you're doing every one of us that's what every religion is doing that's what everything is doing it's everything has has reduced the word of God to nothing so that we can exalt our own understandings and opinions and use our eyes and determine which is good or evil on our own behalf. Everyone. The church is the main source of this uh, reinforcement. Because see, your, your sin in you wants to judge and wants to, to take control and to, to determine your course according to your will or your, your, uh, your choices, your free will, everything. That's your flesh, by the way. The spiritual man lays all that down, has no confidence in his flesh, and trusts the word of God. The spiritual man will live. The earthly man, the one that is according to the carnal ideas and understandings that they've been presented with, or that can be rationalized in their own minds, these people will uh, die and go to hell. Because hell isn't this uh, a place of eternal torment. That's a lie. And that was set up by Satan as a lie in order to say, oh, well, there's there's a place where good people go and there's a place where bad people go, heaven or hell. You know, and even those that are no more than that are going to say, well, there's two sides to hell and, you know, or death. There's going to be the paradise side and the, the punishment side. Well, there is someone that is in the is in the punishment side, but that's not even, that's the prison. That's the Nephilim. Everyone else goes to sleep. and And so you... Are going to sleep. Anyone that dies, you're going to go to hell. And hell is not, like you said, it's not this scary place. It's just the place of the dead. It's just a trash can until you're resurrected. So I'm here to tell you again, anyone that has died up to this point is in hell. They're not conscious. They're not being tortured. They're just asleep. Okay. Okay. So the goal of the matter is there's only three that we have testified that have lived. Okay, One was, was Enoch, the second one was Elijah, and the third one was Jesus. Okay, But Jesus did something different. Neither, neither uh, Enoch or Elijah went down to the belly of the earth. Jesus went down and overcame death. See, these two, the first two never actively overcame death. They just received the word and lived. Right, and so that's what we're 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 all trying to do. There's no need for anyone to go to death, believer or unbeliever, good or evil. There's there's nothing there anymore. the The wages of sin were death, but Christ took that death upon Himself. So death has been defeated. Death has been removed, and since hell is the result of death, there is no more hell. Once this is established, once we we come to this knowledge. But anyone who does not receive Christ as the source of life and obey his word, your life will run out and you will die. And because you died, you have to go to the trash can. It's very unceremonious, but it is the result of just using your life, losing it. So then those of us who have reconnected to Christ, we live. Because we're not distracted by anything carnal anymore. We're not, the, the, the working of death is not operating in us anymore. So death has no more dominion over us. And we are overcoming death. So then we were dead and dying, which anyone who is still carnal, that is still in the church system or in any religion or philosophy or anything like this, you're still dead and dying because death is having its work on you, which will result in the grave. Just, I want to make this clear. So those of us who have escaped death, we are no longer carnal in our imagination, but we have submitted ourselves to the eternal word of God. Now we fully face him and we have entered into life and living. See, living, life and living goes on to eternal life. That's what is happening. We want to be like Enoch or, or Elijah where we just keep going straight on into life. We have no need to follow Christ down on the belly of the earth. We have no more need. He already overcame came that for us. And death is the last enemy to be conquered. And so so we've been everybody's just going business as usual, business as usual. Everybody's lived, born, uh, grows up, dies. Born, grows up, dies. Grow, grows up, because nobody has believed Christ. It's not because we were capable of it, because the Holy Spirit is now revealing it to us in the way that we do it. See, we're not just 
he's not just ma- sprinkling magic fairy dust on us and that we're all just going to, you know, just live all of a sudden. See, sin has to be dealt with in you. You have to learn how to overcome sin and enter into life. You have to overcome death and enter into life. We are being taught how to do it practically in real time. This is what's going on. See, Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. And we are taught to be, we're being taught to be obedient to him. So up until this point, no matter how good we've been, we've been the best that death could offer. We've never noticed. We've never known anyone. We've never seen anyone who was alive and living. We don't, we've never noticed that. We've never seen that. We've never even been exposed to that. The best we can be exposed to, according to our own senses, is, is a dead man walking. That's it. We've never seen the alive man living. This is where we're at now. We're entering into the new territory. God has, God has made a new uh, dispensation, and it's just been recently. And this, this is why I know that we're going to live. Okay, so think about the apostles. Okay, think about before that, the prophets. So they wrote stuff that was not unto them, and they didn't understand even what they were writing. But when the apostles came along, they went, oh, yeah, this is what this is what it was, because the Holy Spirit quickened in their own hearts the understanding that these guys were writing about. The same way now, we look back at the apostles and what they were writing about, they were pointing us forward to this time. So then we are the, we are in the age now where the priests are going to be, the king priests are going to be revealed. So God has set in motion from the beginning of time that you guys would all be here at this moment, that we would attain unto the resurrection of the body. This is for the purpose that God has in this generation the priesthood, the kingship, the king priests that he has established from the foundation of the world to replace the, the, the kingship that, or the priesthood that was in place where Satan was actually originally being the intended leader. So then we are dethroning and removing that priesthood and taking our own priesthood up where we're supposed to be. Because it says even we, the angels are going to come and be judged before us, or underneath us. You know, it's where Satan, you can see how irritated he would be in that, that he was so great and powerful and beautiful, everything else, and then God set some lower creation above him that he perceived to be lower. <coughs> so, anyway... You're not, you guys are not just spectators. You're actually been foreordained under the priesthood. <clears throat> whatever your genetic makeup, whatever your forefathers were, whatever you've been learned, whatever has been happening is all to get you to the place to where you're the right mixture to be the priests. Whatever that is. Being genetically, being... Uh, emotionally, spiritually, everything about you has been fashioned from God, from the eons up until this point in order for you to be what you are right now in order to be able to overcome everything that Satan has set up. See, I want you to see, there's this psyop that Satan has set up. Is been, he's had thousands and thousands and thousands of years setting up the system trying to prevent the man-child from taking over. He doesn't want the first fruits. He doesn't want the king priests. He doesn't want them because as soon as he does, then he is going to be dethroned. And he knows it. So, everybody, you got to understand, your sin was working against you. Every world system is working against you. Your own parents are working against you. Everything, all religions were working against you. Everything, Satan's constantly, constantly um, accusing you from your birth. You, you've never, ever had a glimpse of life. You've never even, there's no way you could have conceived of life. There is no other way. The prison bars are so utterly profound. They're in your mind. They're in the world. They're everywhere. There is no way you could have overcome this unless you were foreordained unto this time to do it. Everyone that says, oh, I just believe. No, you didn't. You've just been you've just been moved from one prison cell to another and you thought you'd escaped. But because you're still in death, you're still dying and you're going to hell. I mean, there's just no two ways about it. So the goal is to live. All right. And so now we're gonna go back. I'm gonna go back to the beginning. So Adam and Eve, when they were created, they were connecting with God. They were fellowshipping with him. They were they had no other distraction. It was always, it was just him and them, and they were completely 
I've been using the analogy of like a, a compass, especially like a flight compass, to where no matter if you're upside down, sideways, whatever else going up, down, anywhere you're going, that compass always points to magnetic north, okay? And it's pretty funny because as an aviator, you, you, go the, you know the difference between magnetic north and true north. There's two different norths. And so it's like everything that Satan is trying to get you to do is to look to the other north and not, not be the one where your, your compass is pegged to, right? And so, so anyway, as, as we are completely pegged on God, we receive his life and we share it back and forth with him and with each other. Okay. And so that we're being transformed into his very image, into his very being through uh, that connection. Okay. So what Satan wants you to do, that's all he's focused on getting you to do in all these prisons and all this deception and everything that he's done is to get you just to turn away just a little bit, just a little bit. It's all he needs. He doesn't need you to turn fully away. He just needs you to be off just a little bit because then that way you can't grow that you will stay a minuscule baby Christian completely unable to do anything for itself, to defend itself, or to, to be a threat in any way to his kingdom. And that's what has been done to you. So that's why we look at all these denominations and everyone's still infants, so infantile, in fact, that they are completely like little babies arguing with each other over the rattle have no idea of what's going on, not even from the, the to the least bit. Because you'll go talk to the most respected pastors and they're going to still think it's about heaven and hell. Not realizing that they don't, they don't even have the basic pieces figured out yet, even to make a determination one way or the other. And so then we being revealed by God that he has shown us spiritually the real battle, what's really going on, how deep the deception has been, and how glorious his overcoming in us will be, and what he's using us for. You see, most of us are just very just happy that, I mean, I'm going to say all of us. I'm going to be that confident to say because I, I'm seeing a trend here in those who are ordained in order to be his priests. And I see this thing is that, that first of all, people m dismissed you for no reason your entire life. That you were right and you knew you were right, but everyone just thought you were just, every just you know, you've got, there were job offerings and things like this that you got passed up over for that you should, were way more qualified than anyone else, you know, in relationships and everything else. You were just dismissed and people just didn't, you know, and you're going, well, I'm right. I can see what I'm doing. But they, they just dismissed you. Um, your whole life has been that way. You never fit in. You never quite got along with everybody you didn't you couldn't fit in the world you couldn't fit in with religion you you until your home was manifest that it was Jesus Jesus is the only one that you gel with and then and those who are of the heavenly household and so then all of a sudden you're you're meeting each other and then we, we it's like we constantly have something anyway I can keep going on and on and on but in your heart of hearts you're just happy you're in you you're conscious that you don't even deserve to have even the least of what God has given you and you're just happy you're in and you're completely satisfied with that you have no other need for anything else you're just happy that you are of the household of God it all be a janitor in the basement in the house of God uh, rather than being a king of this earth I'd rather be the I'll be a bit I'll be the janitor I'll be the plumber I'll be whatever you need I'll be the lowest part in this place I don't care as long as I'm in I'm cool. You know what I mean? And that's how I know your guys' hearts are the same way. So, but I'm going to I'm going to show you what God's real intention is for you. You're not going to be the janitor. You're actually going to be the king priests. We are being set up as his heavenly host. I mean, not the heavenly host, but as the heavenly priesthood. This is where so in the millennial reign when we're reigning with him for a thousand years, it's like training for whenever everybody else is brought back up, when the angels are brought before our feet and all other people come and all nations come and worship before us, it's not that we're going to worship us, but then you you and I, are we're going to be so experts on life and how to maintain that life with God and how to walk with Him and fellowship with Him and love. And, and, and we're, we're the ones that actually are able to wield it and use it like Christ. So that we... Uh, the, the priesthood is like the 144,000 is like a really closer number of what's really could happen that way. And so you've been, so then the thousand years, it looks like it's going to be more like a training time to where you're going to live and walk with Christ and be trained in all of his ways and to be perfected eternally. And so that whenever everything else is brought back up, we're able to minister to them in the heavenly realm in life. 
So we'll be ministers of life. So because everyone, all the ministers you know here are of death. All, every pastor you've ever known just ministers death. Nice people. Good people. But they distract you away from the kingdom of God. Against God's word. So I'm going to tell you right now. Every doctrine that you ascribe that says, Oh, you must say the sinner's prayer. If you have to say the sinner's prayer, that negates God's word. Because you're saying that he hasn't already saved you. That he hasn't had his plan from the foundation of the world. That he's not powerful enough. You've already acknowledged that. You have to say that they have to believe. Well, then that says that if they don't believe, then they can overrule God's word. If they have to accept, well, then they can overrule God's word. You, you keep going down the line of everything that you say you need to do in order to become a Christian, then you overrule God's word. Or if you say those Mormons are going to hell, you're overruled God's word. You are satanic, right? Those Muslims, they're going to go to hell. You've overruled God's word again. You are satanic. You are just like your father, the devil. You've overruled God's word in order to condemn these people thinking you're doing good. And you are doing good for somebody. Your father, the devil. I mean, you guys got to see how simple this is. It's incontrovertible once you see it. Because God said one thing, you're saying another. That's exactly what Satan did. That's what Adam and Eve did. That's what we have all done to maintain ourselves in death. Death, 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 death. So then all we've ever known about is death and dying. We've never known what it means to be alive and living. And this is where we're at, you guys. Those of you who see the Lord and have rejected any other thing that exalts itself against Him in His Word, because you guys have all done it. You guys have no confidence in your flesh. So you are directly looking at Him. You are being transfused with his life and sharing it not with just him. You're sharing it with me and everyone else. Because we don't have to be side by side to share this energy. This energy is eternal. It has no barriers. It has nothing. So then through us, uh, life will be overspread. Everything will be brought back into resurrection through us. Of course, it is Christ as the source. But he's using us as his instrument in order to disperse himself and dispense himself across the planet and across all of time, space, and anything where the fall has, has touched or tainted. The, the fallen angels, Satan, everything will come and worship before us. They will confess, bow and confess. We are going to teach them how to live. We're going to teach all the people that come out of the pit, out of the grave, how to live. I mean, Christ... It's all Christ, but he is choosing to make us his body to produce himself in order to dispense himself. It's a corporate Christ. He is not just one in his body. We, You and I together are the corporate expression of Christ. He is choosing to use us as his hands and feet and his body in this. You know, because you always hear that your churches call themselves the body of Christ and they are not the body of Christ. In order to be the body of Christ, you have to be absolutely fully submitted to him. And as long as you're in a denomination, you've admitted that you've overruled God. Because you're, the only reason you have a denomination is because you say your way of worship is better than that dang Baptist over there, or that Assemblies of God, or that freaking Pentecostal over there. You guys, or Mormon, or Jehovah's Witness, or whatever you guys want to get along. You're, you, the reason why you have a denomination, why your church is not, why you didn't just join the other church down the road, Take all your resources and everything down there is because you find in your church something superior to that church. Whether you're right or wrong, as far as the thing that you find superior, either way, you overrule God's word in order to have your denomination. Your pastor overrules the God, the word of God. He claims he's a pastor by a piece of paper. He's claiming to be the head of your organization, that he's the one. Well, that overrules God. Because the, the new covenant is that God would write his laws in your mind and upon your heart. That no man shall teach you know teach each other, know me, for all shall know me, from the least unto the greatest. So a man who sets himself up above another man as though he is, say, a mediatorial class over a layman, which is called the teachings of Nicolaitans, by the way. But if he dares to do that, then first of all, he's assumed and overruled God.
Well, the people that actually are lazy and submit themselves to him and allow him to be their guide, then they themselves have also overruled God and put a man above themselves rather than their father. I mean, I'm just trying to show you how deep the rabbit hole goes, how there's no possible way you could have seen through this, that there's no possible way we could have escaped unless the Lord had not foreordained us with his life because only the living ones can see this. The only way you can do it is to step out from death into life and look back and go, holy shit. So the evidence that we have stepped into life is that first of all, we, though there are several evidences. The first one is that we submit to no other word, no other man, no denomination, no religion, no nothing. We, we, uh, we are completely 100% obedient to his word. Nothing else. Doesn't matter. Not whether you're sinning, whether you're good or evil, even if you're doing bad things, good things, it doesn't matter. You're still subject to his word that it can never change. And that's your hope, that's your anchor, that's that's your, your transference of life with him. The other thing is, is that you know you've entered into life because you can turn around and see death and go, oh, that's where I was? But until you enter life, you cannot even perceive that you are dead and dying. It's crazy, guys. And if we have entered into life, this life goes on into eternal life. And if we have entered into life, in prophetically speaking, we are at the very last time, you guys. So, enjoy. You know, and I know there's all kinds of bullshit happening everywhere and all kinds around us. But I'm going to tell you right now, I love life more than I've ever loved life. I love it more than anything. I don't want to leave. I, I want to see this earth be restored. I'm excited every single day to get out of bed and see what God is going to do today. I'm like, son of a bitch, especially right now. It's like, it, it's, it's coming at such a rate that I can't even, it's like, I can't even keep up. You know what I mean? It's just like, uh, it's just, and, uh, but entering into life that nobody's ever been here before you guys. We, we can see because everybody was still in denominations and doctrines, still adhering to good or evil or having images for Christianity or whatever it was. You can see it up and it is never, no one has ever entered into life yet. Everyone has been dead and dying. Now we are alive and living and it's never been seen before. We are in new territory. Just showing that God has opened up a new dispensation, that he's revealing something he's never revealed before. And we just happen to be the ones that he has foreordained in order to be here when this happens. So that we will be the priests. It's just crazy. God has seen you from the very beginning and has, and has earmarked you for this purpose. You are not just the janitor. You are not just the lowest part. You are actually the high, most highly exalted. Because you humbled yourself and so now you're being exalted. It's crazy how this is working, you guys. You know, it's interesting. You know, I just remember, and I see stuff like Moses, whenever he was up on the mountain with God, and he just, he was emanating light, and people, thought they wanted him to cover himself up, because he was just, he was actually like glowing, you know what I mean? And it's just, it's interesting, the little thoughts, you start seeing all this stuff happening, and it's like, all through the scriptures, things are starting to tie together. And where I'm going to go today is just Genesis 1. We're going to go to Genesis 1. And I'm going to just establish God's word from there. And then just to show you that it's never changed, that he has been faithful 100% to what he has established. We are the ones that dis disregarded him. We pushed his word away. We didn't care. We overruled him in everything we do. Our opinion is, has real, is held supreme. We have been our own judges, exalting ourselves above God. But now, like I said, we have humbled ourselves and have heard and accepted only His word. We've seen the futility and the vanity of our thinking, which just ends in death. And it has been ending in death for centuries. Centuries, I mean, time upon time upon time, everybody's just been in the same cycle. Born, live, die. Um, and it's because we've been taught to honor death over God. Oh, well, look, well those people are going to go to hell. Well, then you've honored death. It, it, everything we do is pointing people to death, the power of death. 
keeping the operation of death in, alive in them through through our opinions and denominations and works and ideas and blah 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 our in our our pointing fingers at other religions it, it just overrules everything overrules god's word our word should not be because you're not a christian you're going to go to hell it's going to say regardless of what you are god's word stands and where he is you will be too and this is the word that sets them free because it death has been the problem death is what causes sin Death is what causes everything, causes the grave, causes everything. Death is the issue. Death is holding everyone captive. Everyone. That's why if you're not, uh, if you don't believe God's word, it's because death. So then what you need to do is rather than good and evil denominations, religions, you don't, you're not pointing to that anymore. All you're doing is telling them the good news of life. So then life will have his work in them. It doesn't matter whether you're a Muslim or a, or anything. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. The the word is life. Life is the only thing that changes anything. Life is the only thing that doesn't go to the grave. <coughs> I mean, just to show you the worthlessness of what we've been taught, what we've been told, what we assent to, what's been going on from the from the fall, we, we just nobody believed God. No one except for Enoch, Elijah, and Jesus, and now us. You guys got to understand, we are in life, unto eternal life now. We are no longer dead and dying. We've made the transition. Just by merely by the revelation of God, showing his supremacy to us, showing his absolute victory, that is, he is the judge above all judges, and he's already justified you. He's the king of all, all kings and says that you are mine. You're my son. You're an heir. You're, a, you're royalty. You know what I mean? He's the God above all gods. Meaning no matter what any other religion says, he is above that. I mean, everything is him. He, he is supreme authority of all things and he's already justified everything. It's very good, he said. We have been contradicting him to our death for this entire time. Thinking we're serving him. We've been handing our children to the grave. My parents handed me to the grave because they didn't know. Everyone's been handed to the grave by the ones that claim to love them. Every pastor has been responsible for people going to the grave. Every single religious person, every single religion, every single teacher, anyone that has been established on this earth that was contrary to God and exalting their opinion above his has been responsible for the death of all men. And so when you see that cross that we were all worthy of death because we were all murderers just like our father the devil and that we not only did we assent unto their death, we actually actively caused them to be put to death like we were holding the fucking hatchet ourselves. In that we, we overruled God with our authority to someone who was impressionable below us and then caused them to believe our word over God's. I mean, I know I can't, I'm just trying to clarify it in a thousand different ways so that any arguments that come up, you can see your arguments are stupid. You have to argue against God to argue with what I'm saying right now. You would absolutely have to blaspheme the name of the Lord in order to argue what I'm saying right now. I can tell you, just like Job, he found out that he was righteous before he even knew he was righteous because God said it. That no matter what he did, right or wrong, up or down, good or evil, back and forth, believe or don't believe, it does not have any bearing upon the judge. The judge has declared this word is the gospel. This word is what people need to hear. This is the word of life, you guys. And this is the word we are subject to. I don't care about your pastor. I don't care about your religion. I don't care about Christianity. I don't care about Islam. I don't care about anything besides his word. That's it. You take that up with yourself. If you think I'm blaspheming his name, I, mean, I, could just, I just proved to you you're blaspheming his. You argue all you want. Bitch, moan all you want. Try to use some mental gymnastics all you want. But at the end of the day, you're going to have to acknowledge that you have to hold your word above his, your doctrine above his, what you've learned above him. Everything that you have to do, you have to put him below you in order for you to be justified. 
that's exactly exactly what um what uh job was doing but god refused to impute iniquity iniquity to him because it would go against his word that's why jesus will not impute iniquity to you because it goes against him he would have to go against his nature he'd have to go against every <clears throat> everything that's been foretold <clears throat> Everything that he declared, he'd have to undeclare it in order to do that. Then he would be changeable. Then he'd be fickle. And then your unbelief made him made you go to hell because his word sucks so bad. You see what I mean? It just it doesn't make any sense what we've been taught. When you when you put the light of God's word, what he said, what he maintains, that what he said is like the it's the word that is every moment for all time, from eternity past to eternity future. That word is just spoken it's just bomb it's constantly just being spoken like a like a loud horn brrr, for all time and we were just like oh nah <laughs> you know and liam he's like oh he had a he had a dream he said about way he was at this train station and he this lion roared right and he heard it so loud but nobody else heard it and he's or they were pretending not to hear it or whatever but he's like oh how'd you guys miss that and that's literally how god must look at us like we're like he's like oh I've been telling you nonstop. All of my creation witnesses of this, all of the prophets, everything, your body, everything you look at, see, experience, your whole unique being, it's all my word constantly. Bah, you know, and nobody's like, oh, no, no, I'm a sinner. Oh, no, no, that guy needs to believe or he's going to go to hell. Oh, no, those Muslims over there. No, nope, they're too far gone. They don't believe in Jesus. They just think he's just a man. They're going to go to hell. All oh, those Unitarians, those Trinitarians, those all these people, they're just, their doctrine's wrong. And You're just like, God, shut up. Just shut up. Finally, just shut up. Now, shut up and become humble to the word of the Lord. Now, forever. Never stopping. Believe him. Agree with him. Follow him. Reconnect to him. Have fellowship with him. Take his life. Be transformed to the very thing that he needs you to be, which is a king and a priest, an overcomer, to overcome death, to live and live eternally. Not just not just your living, like the state of just being animated, but to actually live. We don't even know what it means to live. We've only been dying. Dying unto death. That's what we've been just dying and dying and dying, perishing. We already were. When Jesus says, you know, I didn't come, you know, you were already perishing. I didn't, you know, you were, I'm trying to give you life and life abundantly. And that life is something we've never experienced up until now. And now that we experience it, it's like, oh my God, it is worth everything. It is worth dying for. It is worth giving everything for, giving everything up for, because even like he was saying, like Liam was saying this morning, he says, if you were, if you, uh, like if you were going to be martyred, well, you know, that's be shitty. I don't want to be martyred. I love life. But um, I'd rather have that happen to my kids. You know what I mean? So anyways, folks, we're, we're going to, we're, we're going to live. We're not going to die. We're just going to keep going up because we're doing what we're supposed to do now. We have seen how to appropriate God's life. We're actively ap appropriating it the evidence that we've seen it is that we can turn back and see death where we were we can also understand what the lord means and we are completely subject to him i mean everything that is supposed to happen in life is now happening so congratulations you guys are the man child you are the priests the kings of god and you are since being that priesthood you have you're going to be uh, exalted above like everything <laughs> like i mean like above satan above all the angels above everything because of that we have submitted unto god and we've humbled ourselves to him and so now he can exalt us so get ready strap on you're about to be it's about to get i mean strap in it's, it's gonna get awesome really soon okay well now that being said um and if you still think I'm, I'm like, you probably think I'm a nut. So probably think I'm just crazy. If you don't know what I'm talking about, if you're still dead right now, you, and you're still, and you're still listening to me. Well, I'm just going to say you've, 
maybe God is calling you, you need to, you need to live. Because anyone else, they would just have already shut down by now. I think. Okay, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Okay, we know that uh, God created through Jesus, right? So, right at the very beginning, that power of creation is his word. Not destruction. Creation. He doesn't destroy, he creates. Okay, I just want that to simmer in your mind just a minute. <clears throat> so then, anyone that says that God would destroy is contrary to God right now. Okay? Okay. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. So now we see God's active recovery of his creation. See, there's a lot of scholars that believe between Genesis 1 and 2 is where, like Satan and everybody fell. All the fallen angels and everything. There was the, there was the issue. So it says, The earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. So now God's in his act of redemption. Because he doesn't destroy, he just fixes. Whatever you break, he can fix. So what he does, he's the redeemer, that's his name, the savior, which means salvage. He salvages things. He makes them good as new and better in our instance. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. And so that light is Christ again. So God, Christ was creation. He's also light. Okay? So that light was God's answer to the darkness. And how he's going to get rid of the darkness. How everything's going to be overspread with light. In that darkness, there will be no dark spot. Look in Revelation. There is no night there. There is no darkness anywhere. Interesting. So, well, what about all these people that get cast in the lake of fire? Well, I'm sorry. Well, look at death and hell get cast in the lake of fire, you guys. So if there was a place to where you could be separated from God, which... And he would have made for a short time until the time of reconciliation in order to protect you. But that has been undone. So death and hell are cast in the lake of fire. So where is death and hell? It can only, it's gone. So then the lake of fire is in his light. And fire again is life, you guys, just so you know. Uh, the absence of God would be darkness. No life, no energy, no nothing. So so the fire is, is good. Just want you to know. Um, light produces heat. Uh, fire produces light and heat, everything that is needed for life. We're uh, that's why we have a big ball of fire right in the middle of our solar system, by the way, or in our solar system, whether it's the middle or not, is up for debate. <laughs> okay, and then God saw the light that it was good, and God divided the light from the darkness, and God called the light day, and the darkness He called night, and the evening and the morning there were the first day. So this has all been from the very first day that God divided the light from the darkness. Okay. For the later on the darkness is not going to be there. But he's he's divided the light from the darkness for now. And God called the light day and the darkness he called night and the evening and the morning was the first day and God said let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters and divide it from the waters from the waters. So <coughs> anyway, I just want to go through this. We know all this work. I'm going to get up to the 6th day. Um, so, oh, by the way, when it says that, he says, uh, so let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven. That's not, that's not talking about the light versus the darkness. These are actually for the times and seasons. It has nothing to do with like the, the first, uh, idea of light and darkness. So the light, the sun was to rule the day and the dark, the moon was to rule the night, but, but light, light and darkness that God was talking about at first is not talking about the light and that we see or darkness we perceive carnally. Okay. Um, buh, 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 buh. <coughs> it was the fourth day and God created the great wheels and everything. God said, let them... <laughs> okay. And then so... Uh... Okay. So the fifth days was all the water life. And I, I want you to kind of see this too, is that as life is being created, it's the most basic life coming up to the most complex life. And this is not only, um, not only is this a record of creation, but it's also an experience for you. So think about it as you're born and you're a baby. It's like your, your mind is more likened to like an insect. You really like have very little knowledge, right? And, or, you know, and you don't, it's just, everything just keeps going up. So 
think about it as if if Satan can keep you down as a bug in your understanding, um, you can't really do much for him. I mean, you're not you're not displaying God in any way, right? You're just a bug. It's just like we look at the people in the churches today. It's just they're all bugs. They're not displaying God in any way. They're actually doing the contrary to him, right? So anyway, but then after we get up all the way through the fish life, which is even more, um, which is better than much better than a bug, but then now we're going to get to the land life. The, and the land is going to be where the living are, right? <clears throat> because those in the water, that's we know later on that those are those that are uh, dead and dying. They're the ones that are in the water. They're not, you know, if you're living in the water, that's death, right? Um, <clears throat> and God made the... Uh, the beasts of the earth after their kind and cattle after their kind and everything that creeps upon the earth after his kind and God saw that it was good. We haven't got to very good yet, but we got to good. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created him. Male and female created he them. Okay, <laughs> and this is really important because it's very necessary at this time that the women come back in. So the men will be the first. So think about it. The last ones to be reconciled is to make things complete will be the women. Because Eve was the first one to eat, then Adam. So once Adam is restored, being men, the women will be the last thing to be restored, I believe, to restore back to life. And women are already opening up, waking back up. Look at look at Kelly, look at Kim, my wife, my buddy Doug, his wife. I mean, uh, my buddy Nick, his 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 woman, she's waking up. I mean, everybody, all these women are just starting to come on, alive now. We're seeing several of them in the Discord group, and that is absolutely crazy because that is also the order in which we, it should be happening so that we should have came alive first because the church always has the woman as the lead because it's it's just, it's it's contrary. They, the women are everything the church does actually serves the women. That's why the churches are like three to one or four to one uh, women to men all the time. There, it's just it's literally it's very matriarchal. So then, uh, even though they'll have a pastor, but he'll be subject to what the anyway. I, I I can go off on a tangent for a long time because it appears one way, but it's really not. So um, anyway, so it said he created them in his image. Which is really cool because so they, he said he gave them dominion, and then he's, they're also in his image, which is priest and king. Just so you know, and uh, God blessed them and, and said, "Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth, subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, and every other living creature that moves upon the earth." And God said, "Behold, uh, da, 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 and every beast of the earth." Blah, 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 blah. And he said, "God saw everything that He made, and behold, it was very good." And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. Okay, so <clears throat> at this point, this is the sixth day that God said everything was very good, and this is where men, men and women. Um, were created in his image and this is where we're coming back to now to where women and men are both exerting the image and dominion of God we're seeing it happen in women now and that's crazy because this is what should happen so the men we've we've been here for a while hasn't been too many women and so now the women are starting to amp up and they're starting to submit themselves to men and they're starting to submit themselves well first off they're submitting themselves to God's word standing that's it God's life been infusing unto them is manifest in the fact they submit to men. It's just the way it is. It's the way God has set it up because as man is to as Christ is to man, man is to woman is God's order. So then when people put God in his direct place, then we know our needs are met by him where he's at and we're not dependent upon um, each other. So then we can we can take our roles up. Because both of us manifest God. And the children as well. But anyway. This is all the pinnacle of God's creation. So, the, and you see that this is mentioned twice. God's record of creation is, it says, it, in an, anyway, well, let's get forward a little bit. Um, bah, 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 bah. And thus the heavens and the earth were finished and all the host of them. And on the seventh day, God ended his work, which he had made. And he rested on the seventh day from all of his work, which he had made. God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because in that he had rested from all the works, which he had created and made. So there's two different works that we're talking about. We have the created work and then the made work. And that made work, it's both the creation and the made work were both settled there. 
this this whole reconciliation is the maid work. So he'd already seen that from the beginning and already called it good, very good. So everything has been restored. So it went fully fully fell. Now it's been restored from the all the way back to the very beginning now. And so we can see the first act of transgression was where Adam and Eve, what they did. And if that is restored back, we overcome all the way back to that point, men and women, game over. Game over. Okay. <clears throat> because you're going to see, the interesting thing is, that, you know, the temple always speaks well to me, but as you see in the Old Testament, everything's outside the temple, right? Trying to get into the Holy of Holies, right? But once it gets into the Holy of Holies, and you see in Revelation, it's all trying to come out. So the, the outer tabernacle is just removed. The only thing that matters is that Holy of Holies, that cube. And then in Revelation, we see that is the, that is the, king, the kingdom and the city and everything. It's the temple. It's everything. Is that New Jerusalem. And so we are emanating out from that. This is the restoration back to the very center, the Holy of Holies of creation which is back to the man and the woman, naked and unashamed, walking in the coolness of the day with God. I mean, this is crazy stuff, you guys. And we are right here to witness it. It is happening right now. We are going to see it. We are at the epicenter. We are the chosen generation that is going to not only see this, we're going to bring it about. This is overcoming all all of Satan's work. And you can see right now how Satan is pushing all this transgenderism and all this feminism and everything they're trying to do and teaching men to hate women and women to hate men. And it's just this complete un incongruency, right? And this is where he's focusing because he doesn't want that last unification to happen. He doesn't want men and women to do what they're supposed to do and cleave. He doesn't want them to do that because as soon as they do, he is, I mean, pack your bag, Satan. But this is his final stand, you guys. And we're here to witness it. And we're here to defeat it. That's what we're here for. So, anyway. we got to understand that men are feeling as though they're... Because men, because of the fall, seek to get their fulfillment through women. Right? Instead of God. Women, because of the fall, seek to protect themselves and to, 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 to save themselves uh, by manipulating men in order to protect, put like a, a layer of security around them. Because at the end of the day, it all comes from that insecurity. So women always seek to manipulate, control, and to dominate so they can have this perceived sense of safety because fear is always the root of it, everything for the woman. And for the men, it's the desire to be uh, loved, desire to be appreciated, desire to be cared for. Because men, we're like little boys. I look at my little son. And I can see me in him. And I can see that my basest desires, he just shows right off the bat. He doesn't need, he doesn't need my like love and pampering. He doesn't need my wife's love and pampering. He just, he needs to, to be respected. He needs to feel as though he's, you know, he means something. That his word is, you know, that he is his, you know, that he is valuable. And so... Anyway, a fallen man will try to use his gaining of women in order to make himself feel valuable rather than God. And so as <coughs> as we become fuller in the Lord, we have no need for women. I don't need my wife's love. I don't need her affection. I don't even need her respect, honestly. I, I, I have that all from the Lord. So I'm I'm literally aloof from my wife. And I'm able to just, I mean, as far as in my in my dependency upon her, I have no dependency on my wife at all. Zero. You know what I mean? And so, and she thinks that's, you know, because in her, you know, she said it before, that doesn't seem very romantic. I said, well, no, it's actually the most romantic because I have no need for you. I'm not being controlled and dominated by my need for you. So that when I truly say I love you is because I've chosen to. From my free, absolute will, that there's nothing holding me back. I have every choice available to me and I still pick you. And that's, that's where a man needs to be. Okay. And then the woman, when she values that, that's where she needs to be. But she needs to know that she won't do that until her security is in the Lord, not her man. Or her ability to dominate them or to control or manipulate. That's, that has to be let go. She has to have her confidence absolutely in the Lord. And it is happening. This is a very small scale right now, but it's happening quickly. So, 
anyway, it's pretty cool. All right. Um, buh, 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 buh. And then this this verse right here in uh, two uh, four. Um, this, or two four and five. This is the big deal, and this is why I know that he's like God had the con he foresaw creation, called it very good, and then he began creating. Watch. These are the generations of the heaven and the earth when they were created in the day that the Lord God had made the earth and the heavens. Watch. And every plant of the field before it was in the earth, and every herb in the field before it grew, for the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth, and there was not a man to till the ground. Okay. So so it's like this is like he he it's like he he conceived it and saw the end from the beginning, said very good, and then he began. Well that's again Christ. That's the word. Again and again and again and again. <clears throat> and this is where we can have absolute confidence in our God. Where not only can, we are, not only should we, we are commanded to. In order for us to bring about the resurrection from the dead for everything. Because that's why it's just not, it hasn't happened yet. Because everybody sees, well, how come it, you know, Jesus said, you know, this and this and this, but nothing happened. Well, because we didn't believe him. Because we couldn't. The Holy Spirit hadn't yet revealed it to us. He hadn't, the spirit of him dwelling in us had not told us yet. <laughs> I mean, it, we, we heard it here, but not here, you guys. We're like, oh yeah, but that sounds great. But we didn't understand what it meant. We didn't understand that we were dying. We're all, what does it mean that we're perishing? What does that mean? What does it mean if, if we, you know, do this, we shall die? And if we do this, we shall live? And what does it mean to live? I thought I was living. I'm breathing, talking, but I'm, you know, you're not living. You're dead. All we've ever known, I can't reiterate this enough. All we've ever known is death, death and dying. <clears throat> the best of what we could assume and the best that we could hope to be is just a, just a dead zombie. That's all you get. You're just a zombie. Dead man walking. That's all you were. Now we've entered into this place to where we're alive and living. And that is just, now it's like, oh, that's what it means to live. And life and life abundantly. And, you know, it's like, the gift of grace and, the, and all this stuff produces life in us that are that we start seeing what is happening what is life versus death because we didn't know what life was because all we knew was death now that we know what life is we can turn back and go oh oh oh, oh and go and then you're going to see people try to you know and there's this there's a guy at the gym i'm, I'm waiting on that I, I, you know he's a pastor and he used to be a pastor he's a retired pastor and i can tell he wants to get into it and, I, and I'm just waiting, but the Lord hasn't directed me to yet. So I've just been saying hi and kind of flirting with him a little bit. But whenever the Lord, uh, whenever the Lord enjoins us, I'll know because I'll, I'll want to because I can, I can see it. He's looking at me. He's, he's like, do I really want to take this on? Do I really want to do this? You can see it. So I'm, I'm waiting for it. I can see the, the angst in him right now. So I'm going to, I'll get, I'll have a, I'll keep you guys posted. Okay. I know it's coming. I can feel it. It's, it's budding. It's about ready to be, he's about ready to be, uh, He's about ready to be uh, harvested. You'll see. Because I'm just going to just keep flirting with him, keep flirting with him. Because someone sent him a bunch of my, a couple of my videos, and I can see that he's he's got some he's got some uh, concerns, shall we say. So, anyway, it's a lot of fun. I'm enjoying this daily. I love my, uh, my life to me is the best it's ever been. I am so psyched about this. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, just... Just for the record, um, if the rapture comes the way that we think it's—I mean, the, the, like like what it says—it's going to be backwards. The the evil are going to be taken out, just like the just like the flood. They're not, it's not going to be us taken out. It's it's God going to be coming into us, and then this world transforming. But those people will be removed because they have to go to the grave while we are being trained, while we're being brought up in the way of the the priesthood. Um, anyway, it's just, I can't believe what God is calling us for. Cause I, like I said, I've only expected ever just to be, I'm just thankful I'm in. I don't deserve anything in this. I don't, I shouldn't even be here. And I'm just grateful that I'm in the door. But not only that, you're, you're going right to the throne with him. You're going to the throne room. You guys are going to be sitting on his right hand. This is, this is not kidding around stuff. 
We can't even conceive of that shit. But this is what you've been foreordained for. This is what you're for. This is what the purpose of your... This would, the whole reason that you can understand this today is for that end. I'm telling you right now. <clears throat> even the apostles, because it's hard to believe that they wouldn't be there with us, you know, reigning like that. Because we see that the, they're the foundation and, you know, they're a part of the New Jerusalem. Um, but it's like they died. So, and Paul says, for, he lays forward to the, to the outward bodily resurrection, which is uh, a resurrection, which is the, the prize and the high calling of God. Well, you and I are attaining unto that because of what he did for us. And what, what Paul, Peter, I mean, all the apostles did for us, all, all the prophets did for us, what Jesus has done for us. But we're standing on their shoulders to achieve this place which God has attained for us, or obtained for us. And so we're, we're just, we're just, we have no right to it. I mean, any of our own doing, we have no, it's just other than the fact that we were created for that very purpose and we're assuming what God has created us for. I mean, it's just crazy, guys. It's really crazy. I mean, you can't even, how can we even conceive of what God's doing on our behalf? And, and to the, the greatness which God has reserved for us is, is it's like mind-blowing. And then, you know, then you start having, you start understanding, like if you look in like the time of Moses, the, the people all around him were like NPCs. They weren't doing anything, right or wrong, good or evil. They were completely disobedient. They were just, and then, so Moses used all those people just, I mean, God used all those people just to perfect Moses. That was it, so that Moses could could write, put along, write along, be that Moses would be the man of God that he could pass this on for us. I mean, everything that God has done, we we, I mean, he loves those people very much, but there there's an order to the eternal kingdom, and and God has set that up uh, to display Himself, however He has seen fit, and we just happen to be made for that office. And it's really, really crazy. I mean, really, really crazy. But that's, there's no two ways about it. So, anyways, my brothers and sisters, um, and anyone that is that might hear this and be touched, man, God bless you all. Um, I know it sounds so crazy, but I, I, it's just, everything is just reaffirming, 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 reaffirming. Everything in me, what I'm seeing, everything, the excitement, the joy that's being, I mean, it's just everything is reaffirming what I'm seeing. So we have, we have passed from death into life, you guys. We are, uh, we are, we are out of death. We are out. We are fully in life and we are being renewed right now. We are being transformed. We are being brought <coughs> to the likeness, uh, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. And we are in that active process right now. It, it's not going to take very long. So, all right, my brothers and sisters, have a great day. Later.